Hey there, ladies and gentlemen, this is Cinemax speaking, and before we begin today's episode, there is something that I need to tell you. Now, the following discussion was recorded as a CCS video podcast back in late January slash early February of 2015. However, due to the increasing complexity of the CCS video podcast and the need to revamp our creative process to provide more consistent content, such as the first episode of our brand new show, Wasted Effort, that you can watch right here, this particular discussion was left to collect dust in the CCS vault. However, it's still a pretty good conversation, at least in this humble podcaster's opinion, which is why we're presenting it to you in the After Hours format. That being said, the conversation may be slightly dated in regards to any potential updates to the Nintendo Creators program, but hey, the heart of the debate is still pretty relevant, so enjoy. We do not have a license to use Nintendo's content in this video through the Nintendo Creators program. This video is not sponsored or endorsed by Nintendo, and thus our opinions of their products or Nintendo itself as a company is in no way skewered by the promises of potentially earning an arbitrary percentage of the video's profits from those opinions. Advertising revenue will not be shared with Nintendo, as critiques and reviews are covered by fair use law. As most people can tell you, nothing goes together like oil and water like Nintendo and the internet. With the rise of YouTube, game reviews, and Let's Plays, Nintendo has actively enforced their legal copyrights by filing copyright claims on channels and going as far as claiming the ad revenue on videos using Nintendo content. However, due to the blowback, Nintendo has offered video creators an olive branch through the Nintendo Creators Program, a loose affiliation and disclaimer in which the ad revenue can be divided. It turns out that that olive branch is really a lock of poison ivy, which led to a rash of YouTube content creators denouncing the proposed regulations and revenue split. From loose language to arbitrary revenue splits to long delays in Nintendo partnership approval, it's no wonder why the internet is in such an uproar. Most recently, Nintendo has altered their partnership policies to require that entire YouTube channels be completely devoid of non-Nintendo content, meaning that to become a part of Big N, you either have to delete content from your channel or you have to start a brand new channel from scratch. Additionally, the list of approved games in the Nintendo Creators program is pretty damn slim, even going as far as excluding the entire Super Smash Bros. series. So, the question of the hour, is Nintendo just legally enforcing their copyrights, and how will Nintendo's stricter copyright rules affect creativity on the net if other companies were to follow their example? Where does fair use law tie into the latest Big N clusterfuck? <laughs> Worse yet, given our long history of discontent with both Nintendo and Let's Players alike, where the fuck do we stand? I'm actually siding on Nintendo for this one, and it's because while it does seem like Nintendo may potentially curtail the YouTube community due to its ambiguous use of language in its Nintendo Creators program requirements, you know, there is one sticky subject that we always seem to keep running into here, and that is the realm of copyright law. Now, once again, I'm going to cover my butt by quickly saying I'm not a lawyer, blah blah blah, but, you know, I think it should just bear repeating here that even though, you know, a lot of channels on YouTube may be safe, technically speaking, under the fair use program, you know, as dictated by U.S. copyright law, you know, a lot of other videos may not be safe under that umbrella. Now, whether this is a bad thing, I don't think so, personally speaking, and I think that's because Nintendo could be entitled to earn revenue off of well, people using its products in their videos, so I don't, I don't really see anything wrong with that. Right, and the, the, my biggest problem with the entire thing is the verbiage. Again, uh, it's it's very umbrella term. We don't we don't know if they're these are applying to let's plays or game reviews. It says here, and I quote, The Nintendo Creators Program is a service through which Nintendo gives you part of the advertising proceeds it receives from YouTube on your Nintendo-related YouTube videos. See, this is where I'm having problems. Nintendo needs to define what types of videos they're legally allowed to monetize. I can see the copyright issues with, like, Let's Plays, because if people are anything like me, they watch a Let's Play, and they have no intention of ever playing the game. However, if the program extends to the game review community, isn't this a major conflict of interest? Because the Nintendo partnership flat out suggests that the revenue split is arbitrary. And that has me concerned. 
I mean, that is a perfect hypothetical issue that does come into play here just because of the fact that, you know, there are problems where companies have actually influenced YouTubers' opinions on their products in the past, you know. So let's take a look at another one of the big three companies here that actually had a similar issue to this. As some of y'all might remember, Microsoft actually got into trouble a little while back when it was discovered that Microsoft was actually paying some YouTubers to say very nice squeaky clean things about the Xbox One and why you should buy an Xbox One and the, you know, accompanying games and all that. Yeah, I think it was Machinima, wasn't it? Microsoft, Microsoft and Machinima. Yes, it was Microsoft in bed with a the Machinima there. Now, the problem that came into focus on in that regard was because of the fact that Microsoft, in its contract, specifically said that people could not disclose the fact that they were being paid by Microsoft to say these things, as you ethically should. And there is the requirement of having uh, something in the video, either through text or saying it orally with the Nintendo content creators program. So whereas Microsoft was trying to be underhanded and affect journalistic integrity in that respect, I think Nintendo is trying to respect that a little more in this program. Mm -hmm. I can certainly commend Nintendo in trying to be upfront with this partnership program of theirs, but I'm afraid that alone does not assuage my concerns regarding the company's competence. You would think that being the legal owners of all of these games, Nintendo would have a fairly decent grasp on how copyright law works. Well, not according to this recent Forbes article. It says here that initially, Nintendo's grandmaster plan consisted of having the YouTubers register their entire channels with the company. This way, the content creators would obtain a license to use Nintendo's footage in their works, and in return, Nintendo would be entitled to a cut of the ad revenue from all of the videos on said channel. Now, the problem of course was the fact that almost every single gaming channel out there is trying to build a fan base by covering all sorts of different games, to cater to all possible tastes. Right. Hence, the obvious question that was on everyone's mind at the time was, hold on, why the hell should Nintendo get a cut of the ad revenue from, say, a Sony or a Capcom video? Mm -hmm. Realizing the error of their ways, Nintendo made haste to amend their policy. Now, if you want to legally obtain permission to use their footage, you need to either submit individual Nintendo-related videos for approval, in which case you're running the risk of experiencing some major delays that will cost you both precious time and money, or you can take the alternative route and create a standalone channel that's dedicated to nothing but Nintendo games. Which, as a fellow online content creator, I can assure you is tantamount to starting from scratch. Right. And now, imagine if more companies decide to follow Nintendo's example. How many of your fans do you think will be willing to subscribe to 4, 5 or even more different channels just to be able to stay up to date with all of your releases? Not to mention, isn't it a bit messed up that a critic has to obtain a license from a game studio in order to be able to talk about their products? Right, and there are the possibilities for abuse there. And while the guy does address uh, people's opinions affecting their ability to uh, register with the program, you know, that doesn't really answer the question of journalistic integrity. Because like any other company, I can't imagine Nintendo saying, oh, you guys thrashed Mario Kart, here's some money. When a reviewer's revenue is dependent on developers, it causes nothing but fucking problems. Again, citing GameSpot where Square Enix bought a ton of ad space for Kane and Lynch back in the early 2000s, and the reviewer was fired from GameSpot after he gave it a less than stellar game review. Yes. Or hell, let's not forget about the issue from about like a year ago on Kotaku, where there was an article called Why It's Stupid to Hate Call of Duty, and behind it there are these massive, humongous Call of Duty ads for the latest <laughs> game. <laughs> I love that example. Yeah, that is a fantastic example. So, given the fact that Nintendo is placed in charge of approving videos has me concerned if, say, someone who makes a similar video to the Kotaku article saying Why It's Stupid to Hate the Latest Super Smash Bros. game, if that video is going to get approved within hours, whereas someone who makes a more detailed, in-depth deconstruction of the latest Super Smash Bros. game, if he may be, say, stopped and frisked for a little bit longer. <laughs> turn, turn your head and cough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. If Nintendo was going to give that guy a full cavity search, 
because they'll, <laughs> they'll try to find any kind of excuse to get that video from being greenlit. Because let's be honest, money is a major incentive for people to keep making videos. And if Nintendo prioritizes or rewards pro Nintendo videos a lot more than they do uh, anti-Nintendo videos or just videos that are more critical of Nintendo. Critical destruction, yeah. Yeah, they are kind of like almost conditioning people in a Pavlovian way to sort of like be friendly with Nintendo. You know what I'm saying? Uh, just from a glance of the fair use doctrine, uh, and we covered this a little bit in the Punisher After Hours. Um, Go watch it now, damn it. <laughs> but, I mean, there are several like prongs here that, you know, the courts or whomever is examining this policy would have to look at to see whether fair use applies. So, again, like, looking at Let's Plays, you know, the language in the law here says, including whether such use is of commercial nature or is for non-profit educational purposes. In this case, you could probably make money off of doing critiques of games. Of course. Yeah, I mean, like, artistic works, you know, and that's where, like, artistic works are kind of safe from like this uh, whole quagmire, at least from my understanding of it. Well, of course. Otherwise, how else would you explain stuff like Dorkly, Machinima, Game Trailers, mm -hmm. as well as a shit ton of other short fan films and parodies? Oh, yeah. Why isn't Fox going after Plinket reviews? Because they're using copyrighted footage. However, fair use law says that they get to use that copyrighted footage as long as they provide the critique behind it, saying, listen, this part of the movie doesn't freaking work. And here's why. Education. Yep. Mm -hmm. Just from stanford.edu, it says, quote, In its most general sense, a fair use is any copying of copyrighted material done for a limited and, quote, transformative purpose, such as to comment upon, criticize, or parody a copyrighted work. Such uses can be done without permission from the copyright owner. Mm -hmm. You know, so when we look at that in consideration, you know, when we look at what Mr. Plinkett does with his reviews, you know, that could be covered under fair use because even though he uses a substantial amount of footage from the movies. He transforms it into something well, else. Well, exactly, and I think that was the subject of a case, like, between... I think it was Nintendo. Like, with people, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Repeat fucking offenders is who they are. Well, I wouldn't say that, but it was back no, in the Dis day No, Disney's the worst. Well, let's be fair. In terms of offenders, you know, Disney was the one who successfully suited daycare for using, like, Mickey Mouse images. Well, you know, when you start comparing everyone to Hitler... <laughs> So, so we, we gotta start comparing Mario to Mussolini then, right? <laughs> <laughs> On the other side of the token, you know, we can't ignore the realities of the case in which, you know, in a lot of situations on YouTube, it actually is argued in a lot of ways that Nintendo is exercising its legal rights to collect money from its copyrighted material used by a lot of these YouTube creators. So, I mean... Right, PewDie because because is, is, is talking over top of, like, a Mario game... Is that informative? Is that educational? Is that a parody? I mean, it's not even transformative, in my opinion. You're just talking over top of a video game while you play well, it. Well, you say that, but if Let's Plays were really that detrimental to video game sales, I would think that some game company, especially the ones who produce heavily story-driven games like Bioware or Telltale Games, would have come after them a long time ago. Instead, it seems like the gaming industry has long since embraced this type of content. I mean, otherwise, how else would you explain both Sony and Microsoft installing software into their own consoles that allows players to record their own gameplay videos and share them with everyone else on the net? Well, my biggest concern is the precedence that Nintendo's gonna create with this. Um, I think Max mentioned earlier that if EA or Capcom were to be doing this, there'd be a shitstorm. Whereas yes, Nintendo, the internet would have been a, yeah, the internet would have been a blaze had it been anyone else. But Nintendo, for whatever reason, I honestly don't understand it. But Nintendo does seem to have this kind of aura of we're the people's company, we're the family company. But just because Nintendo makes all of these bright and colorful games that some people rely on to escape from the hardships of their life, all of a sudden they're off the hook. I mean, I think it does go into account that Nintendo sort of has a different approach with how to deal with fans and that it actually does seem to care about what, you know, the consumer says, whereas Microsoft sort of sees us as like, you know... <laughs> <laughs> walking dollar signs. Yeah, walking dollar signs. So, I mean, I do think there is a different attitude towards, uh, towards Nintendo, but I think it's also because they sort of deal with consumers in a different way. So, it does create a blind fanboyism in a way, you know, and it does sort of cause a lot of people to argue that Nintendo should be exempt from such things. 
a lot of its nostalgic goggles. The problem I have with this incident is the fact that it's once again a case of fanboy idiocy. Right now, we have the Let's Players, and even though we can all agree that they are technically using someone else's intellectual property to make their shows, they are still raising some legitimate concerns regarding Nintendo's potential abuse of power. But are they given a fair trial? Of course not! Instead, they're being trashed mercilessly by Nintendo zealots for even daring to suggest that their favorite game company is doing something wrong. Once the precedence is passed, other companies will jump in. However, like we said earlier, some games benefit from having Let's Players and some games probably don't. There's games like Minecraft and Amnesia that have been overwhelming successes because of the Let's Play community, whereas other more story-based games have probably suffered. Right, and you do raise an interesting point right there, where there is like at least some areas of legitimate concern. So even though Let's Players might be, you know, impacted, by the Nintendo Creators program, you know, you still have to realize that, you know, there are also doctrines like the Fair Use Doctrine in the United States that might protect other people like... Critics. Yeah, like critics, like reviewers and other such things from being affected by the Nintendo Creators program if it creates inequities. It's a complex issue because, again, the Nintendo verbiage isn't exactly specific as to whether they're talking about all YouTube videos, which includes critics, which are covered by fair use, or if they're talking about just the Let's Players, which, to be honest, you know, it does kind of look like they are not really doing anything extraordinary in their videos. Well, all we can do is we can just wait and see what happens. There's, there's, <laughs> sorry guys, there's no fucking ending to this goddamn podcast. There's no answers. Yep. If I were a Let's Player, what I would do is gradually I would try and rely less and less on third-party footage, which sometimes is hard, but uh, it could be done because look at Yahtzee. Mm -hmm. Yahtzee has been critiquing games for the past uh, six or seven years, I believe, and he hasn't used a single second of third-party footage in his uh, videos. And I know perhaps the way he executes his reviews is not your style and whatever, but try to find something else, or for fuck's sake, use just screenshots. Until, until Nintendo decides to copyright screenshots and box art. Eh. <laughs> Although, you know what? One of the possible upshots of this entire thing could be the fact that maybe gradually we can cure ADHD by using less and less videos so that people will be forced to actually listen to what people say. But Max, without the ADHD, how are we gonna survive? <laughs> <laughs> that's like all of our fucking videos, flashing images, little skits. Well, that's true. If you're a Let's Player or just any type of online content creator, what I would advise you to do is to put a meritorium on Nintendo's footage. So, even if you're gonna talk about Nintendo or their games, just put like a little title card that says fuck you Nintendo or something. <laughs> because here's the thing, if you truly like talking about video games and you don't want to potentially sabotage your integrity in favor of getting on Nintendo's good side, I honestly think that your audience will understand and even respect you for your fortitude. Yep. Because that is something that sunk the old gaming media. The fact that slowly but steadily the tangible line between the critics and the game developers got erased, to the point where some of them are practically in bed with one another now. So, if you truly want to preserve your journalistic integrity and continue covering video games in a fair and unbiased manner, you need to keep your distance from the people who made these games in the first place. Because remember, as a critic, you should always be on the side of the consumers. Betray their trust even once, and they'll never forget. <laughs>